Hi everyone, I am Winston Davenport. Thank you for tuning in with me. This week I have just wrapped up a great series entitled The Kingdom of God. All eight of those videos are available on my website, www.winstondavenport.com. And they are also on YouTube. So if you haven't seen the rest of them, please uh, go and watch those, like them on YouTube, subscribe to my channel. And I just want to say thank you once again for all the people who are following me, watching these videos. Uh, the website has gotten an astounding number of visits and I have been emailed and commented on. And it sounds like a lot of dialogue is being sparked, a lot of discussion. People are thinking, maybe it's a little controversial, whatever, but ultimately I'm glad that people are engaging because this is an awesome subject and God is indeed transitioning his church right now uh, into a revelation of the kingdom of God that's going to literally change the world around us. So if you're tuning in, that means that you are a big part of what God is doing. God uh, has a huge plan for this earth and it concerns you greatly. It doesn't matter if you've ever thought of yourself as a minister. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you are a minister of the gospel, a spreader of the kingdom, and it is great to consider you family. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Now that the Kingdom of God series is concluded. Uh, the grand finale here is just a simple question and answer segment. Uh, a lot of you have written great questions, comments, and criticisms to me over the past couple months, and I chose a few of them that I thought were worth mentioning and uh, worth answering publicly like this. So keep the questions coming. I appreciate it. And let's get started. Uh, first of all, someone sent me a quote that I thought was great. It said, uh, the gospel isn't about going to heaven when you die. It's about bringing heaven to earth while we live. Simple concept, absolutely true, and it's snazzy wording. So I like that one. Uh, another one that someone sent to me was, God spoke to Balaam through an ass, and he's been speaking through asses ever since. <laughs> I totally get this. This is true, and, and this could be... In response to what I talked about, I believe in the third segment, I talked about how no one is underqualified for the kingdom of God. The drug addicts, the prostitutes, the liars, the rapists, those who have struggled with the worst addictive sins, those are the people that are going to be entering the kingdom of heaven first, according to Jesus. And it's the, the self-righteous, the Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, the uh, religious leaders who seem to have everything figured out and their self-righteousness and their uh, desperate clinging to traditions. Those are the ones that are going to get passed up by the tax collectors and prostitutes, according to Jesus. Um, so this comment could be referring to that or it could simply be referring to me. God spoke to Balaam through an ass and he's been speaking through asses ever since. So, uh, you know what? I guess I consider myself in good company. So, uh, I'm glad that God is using me to speak even if I come across like an ass sometimes. So, um, one <clears throat> comment that was made that I thought was worth addressing is as follows. I always thought freedom was a process, but you say we are already free. This is a really good point. Um, anybody who teaches that freedom is a process is simply more focused on circumstances, on the visible world, than they are on the eternal truth of the kingdom of God. Yeah, if you look around you and you're not kingdom-minded, you just look at the world around you, it's really difficult to believe that the kingdom of God has come because clearly the kingdom of God uh, means that there cannot not be sickness, there can't be poverty, there can't be sadness, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Those things don't exist in heaven and therefore the kingdom of heaven, even if that kingdom of heaven is on this earth, cannot exemplify those ungodly traits either. So it would be easy for someone who is focused on the natural realm to say, yeah, um, you know, the kingdom of God has not already come or, or freedom is a process, you know, we are being made free, that sort of thing. Uh, but my perspective as someone who is 100% focused on the kingdom of God is that Jesus said the kingdom of God is already here. It's all around you and it is within you. So I believe Jesus when he said that, when I believe that freedom 
is not something that is accomplished through like personal growth or character development. If we could get free by trying harder than the Israelites, you know, in the Old Testament, they would have been the freest of all. They tried so hard by following their rules and regulations to live these lives of holiness and righteousness or whatever. And they were constantly at odds with God because uh, they were failing to live up to the standards that they had placed on themselves. So if we could, through self-effort, achieve freedom, then uh, it would have happened by now. But in fact, freedom... Uh, is something that came 100%, 100% through Jesus Christ, and it happened at the cross. Jesus said, it is finished at the cross. He ascended to heaven and he sat down, the book of Hebrews says, because the work was finished. There was no more that he could do. It was done. The ball is now in our court. Freedom has been 100% given to us by God. You are already free. You are already complete. I have already given you complete and total well-being. All things that pertain to life and godliness are yours through Jesus Christ. So my answer to that that uh, question, that statement, is that we are indeed 100% already free. And the only, the only way that that freedom can be manifest in your life is to the extent that you believe it. So if you only see 10% of your life uh, as free, that means that you're only thinking uh, about 10% of your mindset or 10% of your beliefs are that of freedom. If you see about half and half, you feel like halfway free, well, all that means is that your mind is thinking half thoughts of freedom and half thoughts of captivity. Your mind is the gateway for the kingdom of heaven to be manifest in the world around you. So if there is still captivity in your life, if there are still chains and shackles in your life, it simply means that there are still chains and shackles in your mind. Yet Jesus has finally, once and for all, set us free. And the more you come into agreement with that truth, the more it will manifest in the world around you. Next, uh, next statement, next comment is, um, I am Catholic and I'm offended that you are harping on Catholics. <laughs> Great. I appreciate this comment. Uh, I actually have nothing against Catholics, and I would not be harping on Catholics at all. Uh, I believe this refers to comments I made in the earlier series where I talked about how the church has wasted time for 2,000 years with the Crusades, with selling indulgences, trying to tell people if you buy this relic, you know, with money, then God will forgive you of your sins. Obviously, doctrines such as limbo and purgatory are so far away from what Jesus came to teach that it's just insane to me. And these are the results of man's religious structure attempting to control people. And we know that traditionally the Catholic Church has used God as the figurehead to try and control the masses into believing and acting the way that they think that they should act. However, I have nothing against Catholics. Protestants are just as guilty of this. These days, Protestants are still uh, in the mindset of trying to say, we disapprove of you acting like this, we disapprove of you being gay, we disapprove of you having sex outside of marriage, we disapprove of you watching R-rated movies, we disapprove of this, we disapprove of that, and then to back up their efforts to control you or to control society, they go, and God believes this too. God is in support of our beliefs, so we try and control you, and since we don't actually have power over you, we, we'll, we'll give that power to God. We'll say, if you don't abide by our rules, then God's going to get you. You know, San Francisco is, is going to be the victim of God's judgment. He's going to send a tidal wave, and he's going to judge San Francisco the same way he judged New York City, the same way he judged Buddhism in Thailand, the same way that he judged, um, you know, uh, voodoo or whatever in in New Orleans, you know, they come up with all sorts of BS like this to try and convince people that if they don't play by our rules, then God's going to get you. This is pathetic attempt to control. Protestants are just as guilty of doing this as Catholics, so I have nothing against Catholics in the least. But I do have something against Pharisees of all kind, those who would try and control others through their burdensome rules and regulations and their denial of the nature of Christ and what Jesus did at the atonement, man. If you were here right now and you are a Pharisee and you are teaching that, I would literally punch you in the face because you are not worthy to call yourself a Christian and you are truly wasting the time of the church and you are leading people astray away from God. Paul said, you are foolish, you Galatians, who teach justification based on works. So I would say this invective against Catholics or Protestants or anybody who says that you need to be justified before God through your works, I would say you are foolish, you are broods of vipers, you are whitewashed tombs, stop wasting God's time, stop wasting the time of the church, stop wasting my time. However, 
There are Catholics and Protestants alike who are true lovers of the Father, who, who truly live in relationship with God and are doing a lot of good in the, in the world around them. And Catholics and Protestants both are the inheritors of the kingdom of God and both should be working together to spread this kingdom. So if you're a Catholic, I love you. If you are a Protestant, I love you. If you are a Pharisee, punch you in the face. Next comment. The stuff you preach has already drastically changed our lives in the past couple months. How did you get this revelation? Uh, I'm really glad to hear that, first of all. That is so cool. I've been getting a lot of testimonies that people actually seeing fruit in their lives, that as they're changing their beliefs, that as they're kind of stepping out of the boat, that they really are seeing themselves walking on water. There's been testimonies of physical healings, of emotional healings, of financial prosperity coming, of relationships being restored, all because people are grasping this kingdom of God concept that I've been teaching. And the question here is, how did you get this revelation? Man, uh, this is a good question. I, I would love to just make it so clear that I am not special. God does not love me anymore or like believe in me anymore or trust me any more than he loves, believes, or trusts in you. There is absolutely nothing special about me as to why God would give me this revelation. And in fact, I don't believe that God specifically like chose me and gave this revelation all he did was he called me to set Christians free. And I said, how? And I believe that what the Bible says, all truth is already in you. You have the spirit of truth and you don't need any man to teach you. That's what the book of First John says. You have all truth, the spirit of truth in you, and you don't need any man to teach you. And uh, I have actually benefited a lot from great teachers, but the fact of the matter is I don't need to be taught, just like you tuning and listening to me. This doesn't need to happen. You don't need to be listening to me teach you anything because you have the very same Holy Spirit that I have. All that happened is that I got so fed up with what I had been taught my whole life because I hit rock bottom. I was depressed. I was struggling with addiction so bad. And man, I, I was really looking, trying to think of the best way to end my own life. That's how low I was. And I cried out to God and I was like, show me truth. I want to unlearn anything that I've learned over the years from Christians, from church that isn't true. And I want you to replace it with actual truth. Well, good news is I didn't even know it back then, but all truth lives inside of me. All truth is already here. I just had to open myself up to that. And that Holy Spirit, that revelation of all truth in me just began to manifest and come out. And, and you know, I don't even prepare. When I come here and talk to you guys and make these videos, I'm not actually spending time preparing I'm not pouring over the scriptures. I'm not doing Greek word studies. I simply am coming in here going, you know what? I have a revelation of the kingdom of God. Father, let that truth, let that all truth, that Holy Spirit revelation just come out. As I open my mouth and am obedient to you, let the truth come out and change people's lives. And I guess in that way, you know, God spoke before to Balaam through an ass and I may be an ass, but he's using me and speaking through me as well. So uh, I would like to take that question and just say, man, you have the same truth inside of you right now that I have. You have the same access to revelation that I have. It's just that I got myself into such a bad place that I was so desperate. And I said, God, I don't care what it takes. I've got to know truth. And I, and I believe that the answer to that prayer was just the revelation of the truth that already existed inside of me. Next comment. Um, uh, I'm sorry, God healed my mother-in-law of arthritis and joint pain while she was watching your videos. Again, this is one of the many testimonies of physical healings that I've heard, and <laughs> this is so exciting. It's not surprising, but it is so exciting because the kingdom of heaven is righteousness, peace, and joy. If there is no arthritis or joint pain in heaven, then we are called to spread the kingdom of God on this earth. Our goal should be no more arthritis and no more joint pain on this earth. All that happened was that this uh, wonderful woman, uh, whoever she is, uh, heard the revelation and she believed it. She accepted truth, and that means that kingdom of heaven spread to her, and where that kingdom is, is the light, the Garden of Eden, the kingdom of heaven, the light shined, and that darkness of arthritis and joint pain, it just left because it didn't actually exist. Arthritis and joint pain are darkness, and darkness doesn't exist. It's simply the absence of light. Every single individual in the Bible who went to Jesus, every single one of them who came to Jesus left healed, physically healed. Don't forget that point. Jesus had the perfect heart and will and uh, character of, and nature of his father. And every single person who came to him went away physically healed because Jesus was a representation, the king of the kingdom of heaven. 
He gave us the same keys that he had, and he said, go forth and heal the sick. And that doesn't mean that I have to lay hands on you to get healed. As you come into understanding and receive this revelation of the kingdom of heaven, I'm telling you, the light is shining, and anything in your life that is not of heaven is going to dissipate instantly, just like with this woman. So thank you so much for that testimony, and and keep them coming. This is the fruit of the truth, the revelation of the kingdom of God. Um, And the final comment. I have been the pastor of a large church for over 30 years, and I can tell you for certain that the kingdom is not here yet. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you've been the pastor of a church for 30 years, and I'm guessing that uh, those congregants uh, have sort of wasted their time all these years, man, because Jesus was in ministry on this earth and and he walked this earth for over 30 years as well and he's the one who said that the kingdom of heaven is here and the kingdom of heaven is all around you and the kingdom of heaven is at hand and the kingdom of heaven is within you so pastor so and so uh, this pastor of this large church I'm telling you right now if you believe and you are teaching that the kingdom is not here yet you are not teaching what Jesus is teaching you're not going to get results like Jesus got results and you are wasting people's time my advice to you actually will give you two options here either Swallow your pride, stop looking at your circumstances your whole life, grow a pair, and accept the reality, the truth that the kingdom of heaven is already here, just like Jesus said, or quit ministry and stop wasting everybody's time. Seriously, quit the ministry. If you're not going to teach what Jesus taught, get out while you still can. We don't have time to waste with people like you. The glory of God is getting ready to cover the earth and and you're going to drown. So um, that being said, I say that in love to you, sir. Um, The same love that Jesus expressed when he overturned the tables uh, of the Pharisees and the Sadducees in the temple. Uh, I really... I really don't feel like I need to be gentle because Jesus was not gentle with Pharisees. Paul was not gentle with Pharisees. And if you believe the kingdom of God is not here and you're teaching that, even though Jesus straight up said that, you're a Pharisee. You have sided yourself with darkness. Either come into the light like Saul of Tarsus did, who became Paul, and do some good or, you know, just get out. Get out. So uh, anyway, uh, I appreciate these comments, obviously. Um, I enjoy reading them and enjoy responding to them. So keep them coming. Keep watching these videos. Keep reading my teachings. Download my music, winstondavenport.com. I love you guys. Tune in next week. We'll be starting a new series about sin. Sin. And it's going to change everything that you have ever heard taught about the subject of sin. It's going to radically transform your life uh, as an extension of the revelation of the kingdom of God. We'll see you guys next week. God bless. Oh,